A cyber deck contest on Hackaday? Why, yes, I have a cyber deck right here. My cyber deck may look a little bit different, being mostly an ARM-mounted Raspberry Pi 2 computer and this awesome corded keyboard. But that really gets me into the question of, what is a cyber deck? To me, a cyber deck isn't just a retro future computer that you absorb yourself into. It's the idea of ubiquitous computing, a portable PC that then controls another PC. Along with the idea of ubiquitous computing with CyberDeck devices is the idea of immersion. How does this CyberDeck really achieve the blurred boundary between man and machine? And that's where I really chose to focus with my CyberDeck. The fact that the screen mounts directly on your arm and really tethering you to the system, along with the keyboard, which wraps around your fingers, really making your hand almost immobile but yet can type anything as quickly as your brain can think it. A corded keyboard is pretty interesting because it's similar to playing a guitar. You could play one note or you can play multiple notes and that makes a different sound. If you had two keys and you hit the first key being A and then you hit the second key being B, that would be A and B. But what if you press A and B together? That forms a new letter, let's say C. With your corded keyboard, now with two buttons, you actually get three letters. That's pretty powerful because that means you can have tons and tons and tons of letters. Unrelated to the Hackaday contest is my passion for live streaming and specifically a niche in that genre which is live editing live streams. Having multiple effects being able to be triggered by multiple buttons is really at the core of live editing. You can snip, clip, replay, reverse, flip, apply pixelation, and if you have an accelerometer, gestural effects. At the heart of the corded keyboard is the Arduino RP2040 Connect. This little microcontroller is based off the Raspberry Pi 2040, but it also has some pretty fun peripherals being a mic, an accelerometer and gyroscope, and a Wi-Fi and Bluetooth module. Attached to that microcontroller is a GPIO expander, which I've definitely forgotten the name of, but it's linked in the project. The GPIO expander connects one pin to one button, allowing me to have tons of buttons. The main compute module behind the CyberDeck B3 is the Raspberry Pi 20W W20, you know, but it is the second iteration of the wireless Raspberry Pi Zero. Beyond the brains of the corded keyboard are three rows of four columns of chalk mechanical switches, because if it's gonna be a cyber deck, it's gonna need mechanical switches. On the top half of the corded keyboard is a five-way directional switch, as well as four small metal switches. It took me a little bit of time to figure out the layout of the keys, whether they should be three rows in a flat profile, or this U profile, which wraps around the fingers. It really brought the immersion out and helped the blur between this device and myself getting more and more muddied. You're probably thinking, it's got a screen, it's on my arm. That's a pit boy am I right? Calling new inventions by old concepts really starts to stifle innovation. We put the new concept in a box, kind of forgetting about any innovations it really brings to the field and just saying, oh yeah, that's just another one that they put out. And I think this is bad practice overall. You're just not calling this a Pip-Boy, but you are calling it a cyber deck? As far as I know, a cyber deck is an even older concept than a Pip-Boy. Isn't that a little hypocritical? Well, let's get on with the breakdown of my Pip-Boy. The general feel that I wanted this design to have is a finished product from maybe a Blade Runner-esque world that was then modified with a larger battery pack. 
The design of the keyboard is actually quite complicated, and in this original clip, I had a ton of audio describing my thought process and my uh, methodology of, of designing this, but I think it really boils down to wrapping the keys around my fingers. Once I figured that out, the entire design kind of fell into place. All of the 3D printed files are included in my GitHub account. They're all 3MF file format. If you are wondering about the code, you can also find that on my GitHub. If you plan to make your own CyberDeck B3, I'd love to know. Share it down in the comments. Does the keyboard really work for different hand sizes? Or do things really need to change? These are all questions that I'd love to know, but I can't really know without more people using it. So anyways, I appreciate you viewing this journey of mine, and I hope that you have a great day.